Hello out there, everyone. How are you doing? Dane here from Moving to Canada, and thank you so much for joining us today for our live stream on the British Columbia Provincial Nominee Program, or the BCPNP, uh, which we're presenting in partnership with Perez McKenzie Immigration. Um, I'm excited to see there's so many people hopping into the stream already. I Just before I turned the cameras on, it looked like we were at about 80, 85 people. Just super exciting. Um, so if you're watching, whether you know, you're know you tuning in live with us on Facebook or if you're watching later the recorded version up on YouTube, drop us a comment. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, I'm always super curious to hear where our audience is watching from. And just a note for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you can use the YouTube chapters feature uh, to jump ahead to the sections of the live stream that most interest you. Uh, so today we're going to be deep diving into the BCPNP. We're going to talk about how to check your eligibility, how to apply, uh, some of the cool like job offer features related to the BCPNP, a whole bunch of fun stuff. And because I am by no means an expert in the BCPNP today, we are joined by the inimitable Jenny Perez, a regulated Canadian immigration consultant, founder of Perez McKenzie Immigration, which is based in BCPNP. BC. And Jenny, you live in BC yourself and you have tons of experience preparing and submitting these BC PNP applications. So thank you so much for joining us today, Jenny. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you, Dane. You always make me smile. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do my best. I do my best. Um, and uh, you're you're living in BC, but you're not originally from BC, right? You, you've immigrated there yourself? <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, you know, I'm made in Peru. I'm from <laughs> Peru, uh, but I came to Canada 19 years ago, and yeah, I made BC my home back in 2004. I am right now in Vancouver, in the North Shore in Vancouver. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and just so you folks are aware, we, we're not going to be able to cover everything today. Um, if you do have specific questions, uh, you can book a consultation with Jenny and with the team at Perez McKenzie. I mean, you're about to find out, but Jenny's brilliant. She really knows her stuff when it comes to, I mean, all sorts of Canadian immigration programs, but especially the BCPNP. Uh, so they'd be happy to help you. And you can book a consultation just by clicking the link right there in the pinned comment. So just before we jump into it, I'm going to head back to our comments to see where people are tuning in from. Okay, we've got Tkede watching from Nigeria. Uh, we've got uh, Abdul Karim also from Nigeria. Uh, Ashish from New Delhi, India. <laughs> Leo, Leo says, hello from dark and cold Sweden. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you, Leo. I'm in Montreal, so I, we're going to be joining you in the dark, cold months uh, here in a couple of weeks. Uh, Great. So people from all over the world, which is super cool. And look, if you guys do have questions uh, while we're going through the stream, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll be checking the comments periodically. Um, try to ask questions that are related to the live stream <laughs> to the BCPNB. We're not going to be covering other Canadian immigration programs, but uh, drop. Oh, Michelle is tuning in from Big White Ski Resort. Is that a ski resort in BC? Yeah, Jenny, that... it's a, okay. a cool one, a very nice one. Oh, wow. Great skiing. So we're going to talk about why BC makes sense as a, an immigration destination. So I'm going to get to that. <laughs> so let's dive right into uh, the, the meat of today's live stream. Just a quick overview to begin of the topics we're going to be covering. So I'll move on to the next slide here. Uh, we're going to be starting with an overview of the BCPNP, uh, some, some fast facts, uh, good things to know. Then we're going to be talking about express entry BC versus skills immigration. Uh, some of the BCPNP streams are aligned with express entry, some aren't, and it really impacts uh, you know, how you apply. We're going to be talking about job offers for the BCPNP because there are some super uh, unique and uh, important considerations when applying for a job through the BCPNP. We're going to talk about the BCPNP Tech, which is a sort of tech priorities uh, initiative that BC has launched. And then we're going to cover eligibility criteria for all of the main streams that you can see listed there. And finally, we're going to end off uh, with a little bit of a talk about when and why it makes sense to work with an immigration consultant like you, Jenny. So we're going to launch off by talking about why British Columbia. And Jenny, I'm going to hand this over to you right off the bat. Why did you choose British Columbia? And why uh, do you, so many of your clients want to immigrate to beautiful BC? 
Well, I was in Ontario first, but I am from Peru. Yeah, I completed my master's studies in Ontario when I when I came to Canada first, and I miss the ocean. I grew up next to the ocean in, in Lima, Peru, and I couldn't wait to just move to the West Coast. And what it makes BC so unique is the access to the ocean and then the mountains. Like just in my backyard, I have the you know, the Cypress Mountain, and then an hour and 10 minutes from here, we have Whistler, right? And Which we- is like the best skiing in Canada. Yeah, it's, uh. <laughs> yeah the outdoor the outdoor lifestyle is um, very unique. And also, probably the thing that I like the most is how diverse uh, BC mm-hmm. is, especially Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've I, so I've never lived in BC, but I I did once drive a van across the whole country uh, when <laughs> back when I was young and I was playing in a cool band, um, and it was so it, like we crossed the border into BC like through the Rocky Mountains, and it's just like st- <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that was in Canada. <laughs> like it's incredible yeah. beauty, um, and as you mentioned, Jenny, uh, BC hosts the city of Vancouver, so that is Canada's. Um, that's Canada's third largest city um, and has a population of about 5 million uh, people in the whole province. And there's also uh, like smaller and medium sized towns and resort towns, like you mentioned. And uh, Jenny, do you like you, you guys have uh, Perez McKenzie, you've got an office in uh, Vancouver, but you also have an offer, office yes. in Whistler. Yeah, we actually okay. started in Whistler and then we expanded into Vancouver and we have also some presence in Fernie which is another ski resort in mm. the interior. Um, okay. Farther, farther in the interior, yeah. But a very, very, okay. very cute, a very cute ski resort. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so we're going to start talking about the BCPNP. I do see some questions coming in. Like Amit asked us, uh, BCPNP Tech, does the job offer need to be LMIA supported? So we're going to talk about the job offer requirements and BCPN te- P- P- BCPNP Tech here mm-hmm. in a few minutes. Um, and then Haley asked... Uh, a standard question that we get about a lot of uh, a lot of different PNPs: um, If we get PR through the BC PNP, do we have to stay in BC for the whole time that we're in Canada? Uh, Jenny, no. Um, well, uh, when you secure PR, that is Canadian permanent residency, so you can move anywhere in Canada. But you need to definitely live and work in Canada until you secure permanent residency, as per the conditions of the. BCPNP. Right. Yeah. So you you have to show your uh, demonstrate your intention to reside in BC up until your your PR is approved. But once you're you mm-hmm. have PR, you can live and work freely in any province in right. in Canada. Uh, so great question there, Haley. So uh, BCPNP. Before we get into the programs, I thought we'd just do a, a quick overview of uh, some some fast facts you guys should know. Uh, so. Based on the past couple of years, the BCPNP has been issuing about 6,500 invitations, uh, or nominations mm-hmm. rather, per year. Uh, obviously, that varied a bit <laughs> for the, the past year during COVID. Uh, the numbers dipped a little bit, but previous to that, we're looking at about 6,500. So it's it's quite a few uh, people who are being nominated through BCPNP every year. Uh, and close to 10,000 candidates received uh, invitations to apply uh, just in last year alone. Um, a lot of the BC PNP streams are aligned with express entry and it's, they're kind of aligned in this weird way that we're going to, we're going to dissect here before we, we get going. Uh, but there are also a lot of non-express entry options for those of you who don't qualify for express entry. Um, BC's also got, uh, special programs for tech workers. They've got an entrepreneur stream. They have a rural, a regional entrepreneur stream for people looking to move to, to more rural areas. Um, and finally, the BCPNP uses a point system to select uh, applicants, uh, similar to Express Entry, but uh, it's like there there are different. It's a totally it's different, a different score system. Score system. Yeah. yeah, but it's like it's kind of like Express Entry, where you ha- you want to score high enough to get your get your invitation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So we're going to start off by discussing uh, express entry BC versus skills immigration. Jenny, when I started learning about the BC PNP, this is something that I found super confusing. Can you break this down? Like, what are these two things? Why are they so closely aligned, but also different? Yeah. So when 
candidates can be in express entry first. They will use the BCPMP to claim 600 additional points in express entry. And if they cannot be in express entry, they just can approach the BCPMP from scratch. And the second stage of the permanent residency application process will be done, but not through express entry. They can do it on right. paper or they can do it online. Yeah. So um, the only reason to do this combo of express entry uh, and skill BCPMP is to expedite the processing of the permanent residency application. Mm -hmm. um, and you folks can uh, see that we've indicated here that there are four uh, popular streams of the BCPNP, skilled worker, international graduate, postgraduate, and healthcare professionals. And we're going to talk about the eligibility for mm -hmm. those uh, a bit later on. But for all four of those streams, you can basically choose, like you said, Jenny, whether you want to apply through Express Entry, right. BC. Whether you are eligible or... in Express Entry first or you are not, then that's okay. You can, you, you can choose, yeah. Great. Um, and you mentioned the you get the Express Entry processing if you go through Express Entry BC, and that's uh, quite a bit faster than the, the regular application processing. Uh, can it, you give it, us a little bit about... Yeah, it can, it can be definitely faster. It will be faster, but it's not as faster as it used to be before COVID times. The, mm -hmm. the processing time has become very uncertain and very unpredictable. And the federal government, yeah, was committed to process most applications within six months, you know, in expert entry. But right. in practice, unfortunately, that's not that uh, that's not the regular case anymore. So yeah. um, that gap between going the, doing this combo express entry BCPMP rather than just starting BCPMP from scratch, that gap has a narrow. Uh, over time. Yeah. 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 And for those of you who are maybe watching this later on YouTube, we're filming this in, in November of 2021. And fingers crossed <laughs> that the Canadian government gets, uh, gets the immigration department working uh, through its backlogs and we can someday soon return to those uh, faster yeah. processing times for express entry. So if you are watching at a later date, you might just want to check the average processing times to see uh, how that does impact your uh, your specific application. Um, and I do just want to note, if you're applying through Express Entry and you receive a provincial nomination, you you get 600 points added yeah, to your Express Entry. Yeah, the province will add the 600 points to your Express Entry profile. Yeah, And then you yeah. will get an invitation in Express Entry. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, the CRS score is, <laughs> I mean, if you have a 600 point boost, you're pretty much I'll never say guaranteed, but you're close to guaranteed yeah. receiving an, an invitation to apply in the Definitely. next round. Yeah. Um, great. So, Jenny, we've had uh, questions come through already about the, the job offer. So um, maybe I'll go back to Amit's question that they asked uh, earlier. Let me go back and mm -hmm. find this in our comments. Ooh, tons of questions coming in. So uh, Amit was asking, does the job offer need to be LMIA supported for the BCPNP? Um, so maybe talk us through like what, what is an LMIA and if that's required for BCPNP. Yeah, an LMIA is a labor market impact assessment, and that's an application that is submitted by employers. So the mm -hmm. BCPNP is an LMIA exempt path. So employers do not need to apply for an LMIA. So the BCPMP is a is a great alternative because it's very friendly to the employer. The in most cases there are not even recruitment efforts to be demonstrated, depending on the circumstances. And the applicants not only move forward for permanent residency, but then they secure a work permit as part of the process in very reasonable pro uh, timelines. So. Yeah. So yeah, the answer to sorry, I miss her name. Uh, Amit. Amit. Okay. Sorry. Uh, 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 there's no LMA. So that's something that um, employers find quite quite attractive. Yeah, because for I mean, people are always asking us like, 
can I get a job offer through for my regular express entry application? And in that case, you do require an LMIA and it's a big hurdle for the employer. You know, it takes a bunch of time. They have to pay a big application processing fee. Uh, you know, it's not an easy application for them to put together if they've never done it before. So not having that for the BCPNP, uh, it makes it a really uh, attractive mm -hmm. option for, for yeah. people who are able to find job offers. Um, and Jenny, like job offers are a pretty crucial component of of most streams of the BCPNP, is that correct? That's correct. Um, yeah, so compared to other provinces, basically uh, the key streams of the BCPNP require a job offer in BC, except for the international postgraduate stream. And yeah, mm -hmm. even the healthcare professional stream requires a job offer, but there are um, ways to secure a job offer in that stream that facilitates the process for that. But that's not as uh, in demand stream as the other one. Yeah, uh, and uh, we will go through all of the mm -hmm. application criteria, the eligibility criteria for each of those. Um, we've got a few questions coming in from people um, asking about uh, how to get a job offer. Um, so yeah, Mo is saying the hardest part of the BCPNP is the job offer. How can we apply for jobs? Is there any way to be nominated without a job offer? Um, so Jenny, are there options for being nominated without a job offer for, for the BCPNP? Only if they pursue studies in one of the eligible uh, science-related programs under the international mm -hmm. postgraduate stream. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, and that stream will get to the eligibility criteria later, but it's 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 a high degree of studies too. It's like yeah. your master's or your PhD yeah, at a BC right. institution in the in like one of the eligible programs. Yeah. Uh, but it is possible to find a job offer yes. uh, before you apply for the BC PNP, especially because they don't have that um, because they don't have the LMIA requirement. Um, yes, it is possible. I mean we have many clients that manage to secure a job offers in BC. There is a labor shortage and many employers are actively looking out of Canada now more than, I mean, ironically, during COVID times, many employers are looking and are willing to hire people out of Canada for some occupations, of course. Yeah. And it usually depends, like if it's a more specialized occupation where they can't find the, the labor resources in yeah. Canada. Um, and look, we don't have a ton of time to go through like all job hunting tips right now, but I am just going to pull up an article that we have on the Moving to Canada website, uh, and I'll pop a link to this uh, into the comment section here. So this is a guide that we put together on how to find a job in Canada. It has tons of tips and tricks. It also links to a live stream that we did uh, last year with uh, the founder of Moving to Canada, Rory Splan, who's a recruitment expert, where we kind of go through all of the best tips for applying for a job, even if you're outside the country. We even do like a live resume editing session if you want to get your mm -hmm. resume up to snuff by Canadian standards. So check that out, all of you folks who are wondering how to apply mm -hmm. uh, for, the, uh, for a job offer, especially while living outside Canada. Um, and again, I just put the link to that into the comment section. Uh, Jenny, I guess the last thing to note here about the, the job offer requirement is that you can you can get a work permit uh, yeah. to, so to support once, you while you're... Yeah, the yeah. BCPMP uh, does not only help the candidates with permanent residency, like moving forward for their permanent residency, but also uh, they issue a work support letter so they can mm -hmm. apply for uh, employer restricted work permit and start working for, if they haven't already, but start or continue working for their employers in BC while they wait for their permanent residency to be finalized. Right. Yeah. Which is, is really great. So we had talked about kind of the difference between processing times for BC PNP applications, but like if you have a job you're happy with and you have a work permit that allows you to work there, you know, you, you'll be able to come to Canada and, and, mm -hmm. and live a pretty comfortable life while you're waiting for, uh, for the, um, for the PR to be approved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we've got a question from Abhinav who says, so Abhinav has a job offer already, but he's wondering, like, do all uh, employees qualify? Do the employers need to show a recruitment effort? Um, so I, I know that 
for certain streams, only certain types of occupations do qualify. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about that. It, it depends on the stream, but we're going to talk okay. about the eligibility criteria. But Jenny, as far as a recruitment effort is concerned, do, does the BC uh, employer have to sh demonstrate uh, that they made any effort to recruit people? Yes, if the worker is not uh, employed at the time of the registration in the BCPMP pool, the employer, so by, by that employer, then the employer needs to demonstrate at least two weeks of advertising or recruitment efforts to find a candidate okay. in Canada. Yeah. And okay. so it's very important to keep that in mind for those workers that are not working for the employer in BC at the time that they start the process. Okay, great. Um, and uh, Shaban is asking about uh, spouses. Uh, so when the principal applicant gets that work permit support letter and comes to Canada to work, is the spouse eligible for an open work permit as well? Yes, that's correct. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, Michelle is asking about the step, what comes after getting the job offer. And Michelle, we're going to talk more about that in a bit. Madassar is asking if we'll share a recording of this session. And yes, the recording will be available on our Facebook page uh, just a few minutes afterwards. And I'll also put it up on the Moving to Canada YouTube channel uh, tomorrow. And I'll include like the timestamps so you'll be able to skip to the sections that most interest you uh, through YouTube. Um, Okay, great. I think we've got, we're, we're doing a good, uh, oh, the, I, people are having a bit of issues with the links for the uh, job offer, so I'll put that in again. Uh, but let's move on to uh, a discussion about BCPNP Tech. Um, so BCPNP Tech, it's a, I know it's, uh, it started out as a pilot, they've made it permanent recently. Jenny, what is BC, PNP Tech, and uh, what does it mean for people looking to immigrate? Yeah, it's a, but it's a great um, alternative. It's it can it, it's it's not a stream itself, but uh, mm -hmm. it's an initiative that, as you said, has become a permanent one, and it's a red carpet service for uh, tech professionals, and is extremely efficient. So. Um, the processing times for the nomination are as as quick as a few days or a few weeks. So. Oh wow! Uh, yes. <laughs> what? Yes. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. No. It's um. It's they are doing a great job. I mean, we um we as a team are uh, always impressed with uh, BCPMP and how they operate and how consistent they are. Yeah, and how human also they are. It's, it's you get yes when you deal with a BCPMP there is um, always an officer and an advisor that uh, handles your case and that will touch base with you as needed which you never get to experience when when you deal with a federal government I know yeah that's I'm like that's the opposite of what I know about yes <laughs> yes if so, you're watching can, IRCC okay. don't listen to me yeah uh, and that misleads also and we're going to talk about that later yeah. Yeah, and uh, just before we move on, I'm just going to uh, pull up the BCPNP tech occupations list. I have it on this slide, but I know it's a, a little bit tricky to read, um, but I'll put a link to the BCPNP tech uh, page on the Moving to Canada website, um, and I'll just scroll through this for you folks briefly so you can see the eligible occupations for BCPNP tech. Uh, there are 29 eligible mm -hmm. Uh, occupations and like you said Jenny if you're applying with a job offer in one of those priority occupations you get super fast processing which yeah. is way faster than even <laughs> than I thought <laughs> yes. um, and they do special invitation rounds for you like every second week of invitations is just BCPMP no, every week tech. the BCPMP tech the invitations oh, to apply it? take place every week compared to the other streams that are every two weeks yeah right okay great mm -hmm. thank mm -hmm. you um, okay and uh Ojo is actually asking a great question here. How do we know the employers that are eligible for BCPNP Tech? Is there like an eligibility list of yeah, employers, Jenny? No, no. There, I, I know I'm asked that question. There's, there's no, there's no list of employers, but the employers need to meet some requirements, and mm -hmm. uh, depending on the location of the employer, if the employer is in Vancouver and the Lower Mainland, they need to have. Um, at least five full-time employees or part-time equivalent on payroll, for example. Okay. And then if the employer is in 
out of the Vancouver and the Lower Mainland in the interior of BC, they need to have at least three full-time employees on pay. There are, of course, other requirements, like having uh, operated a year in British Columbia for some streams versus two years for other streams. So, yeah, there are some requirements to keep in mind. But the most important thing is that the employer needs to offer them a year-round full-time position on payroll. Perfect. And we're about to deep dive into those requirements per stream. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did just want to note, like, it's BCPNP is a little bit different from, like, I think maybe people are familiar with the Atlantic Immigration Pilot, uh, which has, like, designated employers yes, in each province. I know. So you have, so like, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> each PNP is unique, it's unique, right? They have their yeah. different, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so for Atlantic, they they set their list in advance. For BCPNP, you can go through any employer, and then the employer has to, you know, meet certain requirements mm-hmm. um, in the application process. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, great. So I will move us on to our next slide here. We're getting into the eligibility requirements. Mm-hmm. Um, so. As we get into this, I do want to remind you for the first four streams we're going to be covering, uh, there is the express entry method of applying, and then there is the skills immigration method of applying. The only difference being that you have an express entry profile, and then you go through that faster process versus not having an express entry profile. Um, But we're going to start off with one of the most popular streams, the skilled worker stream of the BCPNP. Uh, Jenny, can you talk us through the eligibility requirements for that? Yeah, so the job offer, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Of course, the job offer in British Columbia and the job offer needs to be um, a skilled job offer. So in the matrix of occupations that is currently in place would be NOC B, A or zero. Um, The wage needs to be fair. That's one of the, yeah. that's an important yeah. requirement. And there are some language requirements for those applicants that are offered a, a job in a NOC B. So, right. yeah, they need to, yeah, in skills immigration, it's uh, only CLB4. But obviously, okay. that the language test results have direct um, significant impact on the score. So, those are just, uh, you know, the minimum requirements, but applicants must aim to secure as high English test results or French test results as possible. Yeah. Right. And we'll talk a bit more about that scoring system later, but um, it is out of 200 points and you get points based Mm -hmm. on your language test results. So even if it's not a requirement to meet the minimum requirements, there's a good chance you're going to want to complete your language test anyway in order to take advantage of those points. Um, What about uh, previous work experience? Yeah, for the skilled worker stream or the express entry skilled worker stream, you still need to prove two years of related, similar, same level work experience uh, anywhere in the world in order to be a legend. Okay. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be Canadian. Correct. Okay, great. And lastly, uh, on the slide here, uh, minimum income requirements. What does that mean? How does someone improve There is that? a table uh, that um, separates... Vancouver versus the, the interior. So there, there, and depending on the number of family members. Uh, so yeah, there is a table in the, that they can find in the BCPMP website. Perfect. Um, and I did see a question come in. It was related to the job offer. Um, Nayat is asking, uh, can you explain like the fair wage part more? Like, should it be the medium uh, wage, um, and I, I have here, I took these requirements from the BCPMP website. So it, the wage has to be in line with the BC wage standards for that occupation. But do you know, Jenny, is that referring to the median wage? Not necessarily, not necessarily, but okay. the, the wage needs to make sense with the position and also okay. uh, with the size of the business, with the region where the employer mm-hmm. operates. So there are different considerations, but it's not as strict as when a labor market impact assessment is submitted, where the median wage is uh, a requirement, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So definitely the BCPMP is um, more flexible in that sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And just a 
Uh, we're going to hop back because I had a qu- good question coming from Natalie to the BCPNP tech just for one moment. Mm-hmm. Natalie is asking for the tech stream, does the job offer have to be for a tech occupation or is it just that the company has to no, uh, be a tech offer. company? That job Great. Offer. Yeah. So the job offer has to match one of those 29 eligible NOC codes. All right. Um, okay. So let's skip ahead to the next stream, which is the international graduate stream. Mm -hmm. Um, again, as we get into it, remember there's an express entry method of applying, there's the skills immigration method of applying, and these are the minimum requirements, but they don't take into account the point system Mm -hmm. that will score eligible candidates. Mm -hmm. So Jenny, can you talk us through the minimum eligibility criteria for the international graduate stream? Yeah. So the international graduate stream has the big advantage of not having work experience requirements. So it's very friendly and accommodating to grads, uh, grad students, international grad students that secure a job offer in a, in a skill uh, NOC B, A, or zero. And um, they only have to meet some requirement. The, the key requirement is besides the job offer as per the other streams is the fact that uh, they need to have graduated within their past three years from one of the schools that are eligible. So that, right. and that is, there is a list in the in the BCPMP website. Yeah. Yeah, and the education requirement, the list covers schools from all across Canada, right? It's not just uh, oh. BC alone. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so you can come to Canada on a study permit, study at, you know, you have to make sure the institution's on the list, but you don't necessarily have to study in BC to Correct. to take yeah. advantage of this. Mm-hmm. Um, great. And the next stream that we're going to cover is uh, similar, but has quite a bit of different requirements. Um, so that is the uh, international postgraduate yeah. stream. Um, so what are the eligibility criteria for, for so this stream, Jenny? This is the stream that does not require a job offer from employer in BC, mm-hmm. but you need to have completed a specific studies in uh, health science, uh, in the health science field. So masters or PhDs. Yeah. And there's also a list in the, in the government website about it. Yeah, it's only certain occupations, but the big thing is, you know, you're doing, you're completing a master's or a PhD or a doctoral program at one of these schools in BC. Yeah. It's a, it's not a small feat to mm-hmm. do that. Congratulations if you are one of the people okay. who are doing that. Yeah. But it's such a high level of education, yes. uh, and you've already demonstrated an interest in BC. That Correct. You don't even need the job offer. You can just, you know, apply right Correct. away. Yeah. Um, and we're getting a few, you know very specific questions come through here. Folks, if you do have specific questions that I'm not able to get into uh, during the stream, please uh, book a consultation with Jenny and the team at Perez McKenzie. If you're looking to check your eligibility for any of these uh, streams, if you're looking for more specific information about a job offer you already have, wondering if it's eligible, you know, Jenny is an expert in this. She'll be able to to help you suss out uh, if it is a good option or it is not. And again, you can book a consultation just by clicking the link in the pinned comment there. Um, Okay. Let's move on to the healthcare professional stream. And this is the last of the their four streams, skilled worker, international mm-hmm. graduate, international postgraduate, and this one, healthcare professionals that are aligned with both express entry and skills immigration. This yeah. is the last mm-hmm. one where you do have that option. Jenny, can you talk us through the uh, healthcare professional stream requirements? Yeah, so this one is a very specialized one. Um, the applicants need to... Me- uh, receive a job offering the industry directly from one of the, um, uh, it, it, the, the, the way the public this, health authority. Yes. Yeah. So the, um, the way it is handled that the key element is to meet the requirements to practice in the province, right? Because uh, okay. we're talking about physicians, nurses, uh, uh, all health related occupations that are highly regulated. So there is a direct interaction between candidates and the health authorities to secure the support to move forward with the BCP. Okay, that makes a lot of sense because I know these occupations, like physicians, doctors, nurses, like those are jobs where even if you have a lot of formal training, if it's from another country, it can right. take you a couple of years uh, even in Canada yeah. to get the, the right. regulation. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, and also obviously you need a two years related work experience. Mm -hmm. Anywhere in the mm -hmm. in the last ten years. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And uh, otherwise, the job offer requirements, you know, it's what we've seen for the other ones. Uh, you have to uh, have your wage in line with the BC wage standards. You've yeah. got to have your language tests if your uh, job offer is at NOC skill level B. Um, yeah, and then the, meet the minimum income requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, great. I'm just going to take a quick look at our comments. Um, you know what, let's handle the last of the skills immigration streams here, and then maybe we will take a few questions that we've had coming in through here. So I'm going to go on to the entry level and semi-skilled worker stream. Mm -hmm. So this one isn't aligned with express entry. Um, and maybe Jenny, you can talk a little bit about why that is. Uh, but can you talk uh, our viewers through the eligibility requirements for the entry level semi-skilled? Mm -hmm. The entry level and semi-skilled worker stream cannot align with express entry because express entry they only targets the skilled workers, right? Right. So yeah. the this is um, a, also a unique stream and requires applicants to complete nine months of continuous full-time employment. That's mm -hmm. an average of 30 hours a week with okay. the employer that will help them uh, and support their PCP and P application. So okay. they need to complete nine months first and then transition, and then the transition to permanent residency can take an additional 18 20 months plus yeah and okay. you need to remain employed with with that supporting employer during the whole period yeah okay wow so you mm -hmm. want to make sure it's it's a job that you can tolerate for, correct for a cut yes, for definitely. what we're looking at maybe around three two three years I, over that I, entire process i would say two and a half years perhaps or in total yeah close Great. to that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's a long time, but then also maybe it's not. When, how many years have passed since March of 2020? I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, you mentioned this, Jenny, it's for semi-skilled workers. Yes. So it's certain occupations Correct. at NOC there is a skill list, level. And yeah. uh, candidates need to be very careful to, to follow uh, this list closely. The occupations that are in the list, there is, um, there is also focus on hospitality and mm -hmm. uh, food processing as uh, you show in the slide and also uh, whole tracking. So there are there is also the Northeast Development Region uh, one that is not very old. And that one, however, covers all NOC C and D, except for okay. caregivers, right? So for the rest of BC, you need to closely follow the list of eligible occupations to pursue this stream. For um, the Northeast Development Region, it's open. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. And I'm, I've just pulled up the list on our website, on the Moving to Canada website, um, and I'm scrolling through the list of uh, communities, municipalities in the Northeast Development Region. And for those of you who are interested in uh, reading through that for yourselves, I will... Uh, pop a link to that uh, into the comments thread here. If you just give me a moment. Um, oh, and while I'm doing this, I see Bithia's, or Bithika is asking, will a recording of this video be posted on your YouTube channel? Uh, to reiterate, yes, it will. Uh, Bithika, so you can watch that by tomorrow. I'll have it up entry level and semi-skilled. Uh, so I'll post that occupation list into the comments section there uh, so you can get more information. Uh, so let's go through and see if we've got a couple uh, questions uh, that we can answer before we go into the more information about the application procedure. Mm -hmm. um, so let me start here. Uh, ben is asking, how can I check whether a job offer complies with one of the, the BCPNP tech NOC codes um, and yeah, Jenny, how do you how do you know your NOC code? How do you know if you if you meet the that occupation definition? Well, they can they can start with the employer uh, employment requirements at the bottom mm -hmm. of the code, especially because that is, those are requirements in Canada, so it's important to meet those requirements that the job offer uh, is aligned with that and also. Um, 
the lead statement is important. That's on top of the note code. And yeah. then that the job duties of the offer that they receive align somehow uh, well with the, uh, the note code that they select. There are, there are many note codes that are uh, quite uh, self-explanatory, of course, but whereas there are others that require uh, some analysis and because many jobs can be a combination of uh, different note codes and you need to select the most suitable one. Yeah, exactly. So look, I've opened up the NOC website uh, here. You can literally just search the NOC codes that you think you might be qualified for. So I'm just going to look up software engineers, which is a tech mm -hmm. job, and then it will show you um, the main duties here. Uh, you want to check that you meet those some of, at least some of those main duties. Um, and you know, if you are ever uh, unclear. Uh, about whether or not you you meet the definition for that NOC code, that's a really great time to book a consultation with a professional and double check that mm -hmm. before you invest mm -hmm. in the in the the time and effort of uh, preparing that immigration application. So hopefully that answered your question there, Ben. Um, Edward asked about bilingualism. Do you is biling oh is being bilingual or trilingual an asset for for every job posting? Um, and I can talk a little bit about that based on some of the employment resources we have. You know, certain occupations it's required, <laughs> certain occupations it's a big uh, advantage, uh, but some occupations it's not. Uh, it's not a. It's not necessary, especially in BC. Cause BC is predominantly like English is the official. Of course, yeah. language there. Yeah, English. Yeah. Yeah, unlike uh, Montreal, where I'm living, it, you really gotta know some French, and uh, it helps to know both English and French. Yeah. From the immigration perspective, um, being bilingual for points or eligibility, unfortunately, doesn't help mm. with the BCPMP. Yeah, yeah, with the BCPMP. T uh, but again, there's a bunch of other Canadian immigration streams where right. being bilingual yeah. in English That's French right. can yeah. really help. That's right. It also, an express entry being bilingual in English and French can make a difference. Yes. Great. Um, okay. Let me see. Uh, Mamdu is asking about an age limit. Is there an age limit for any of the BC PNP uh, streams? No, there is. Uh, there is no. In the point system of the BC PNP, the age is not a factor. Oh, that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. yeah, that's big. Because age is. is a big limiting factor in express entry. Yeah. Um, okay, so anyone who's uh, you know, a little bit older, this is a, can be a great option for you. Uh, I say a little bit older, Express Entry, I feel like you lose all your points by the time you're like 35. It's like, <laughs> I'm only 35, man. <laughs> um, okay, great. So we're caught up on questions. Uh, let's talk application process, um, Jenny. So I'm going to move on to our next slide here, applying through Express Entry BC and Skills Immigration. Um, so I've put together four steps here. Can you talk our audience through uh, this like four-step application mm -hmm. process? Mm -hmm. So the first step is create a profile uh, with the BCPMP and being careful about the stream that you are going to join and also that you meet the requirements before joining that stream. Mm -hmm. I have clients, uh, I have consultations sometimes with clients that create a profile with the BCPMP and receive invitations and they say, oh, I don't even, I didn't even need a job offer. And I'm like, unfortunately, this is not how we need to decline that invitation. So it's important to understand the requirements before creating a profile. And then, as I yeah. said, being careful as to which stream, uh, where you create your profile, because you need to select that at the beginning. Then depending on your points and if your 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 score is competitive at the, uh, when you create your profile, then you will receive an invitation to apply. And as we said before, the tech, the text, um, the BCPMP tech has mm -hmm. invitations every Tuesday, whereas the other streams uh, that require an invitation because there are uh, there are two that do not require an invitation, then they take place every couple of weeks. The runs of invitations, yeah. right? So. Then once uh, candidates receive an invitation, they have 30 days to complete the submission of the application and also to pay the BCPMP fee uh, mm -hmm. that is only done by the main applicant. And okay. uh, then once the application is submitted, depending on the stream, 
it can take, as I said, a few days if it's tech, if it's a tech, I'm used to say tech pilot. So wild. It was, tech, it was a tech pilot for so long, I cannot, um, yeah, I cannot move. And then um, the other, typically on dealing with the other streams can be between a month to three months uh, to receive an answer on the application. Okay. Great. Um, and then if you are approved, if you receive the nomination, what happens after that? Yeah, if you receive the nomination and you are doing the combo express entry with BCPMP, then you will receive the good news uh, in your IRCC account that you are receiving this nomination and the 600 points that you need, we need to accept. And then you mm -hmm. will become a nominee candidate. So that's right. also something that could be beneficial for those that are uh, in the pool in Express Entry as fellow skilled worker candidates and they want to transition to become nominee candidates and receive invitations because they haven't stopped re receiving invitations in Express Entry. If they are do not doing that, this combo uh, of Express Entry with BCPMP, if they didn't, uh, they, they were not in Express Entry from the start, then the second stage of the process is still obviously with the federal government, but you can do that on paper or online. So this year, there is a new portal that the candidates can create and submit this uh, second stage online as well. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So many things moved to digital during yeah. the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, great. Thank you so much for explaining that, Jenny. I've got a couple of questions and a couple of things to note here. Uh, we put this on the slide, but uh, do note that healthcare professionals and postgraduate uh, applicants uh, you can. You don't need to go through the, right. the skills immigration registration system. You just apply for Basically, for provincial right. nomination mm -hmm. when you meet the requirements. The requirements right. are tough for those ones, though. Um, and then um, Amit is asking us: uh, Is the application process for the for BC PNP Tech different or the same as skills immigration? Um, and actually, Amit, BC PNP Tech is it's not its own program, uh, it's an initiative. So it's kind of tied into the skills immigration and the express entry BC streams. So you can apply through, for example, skilled worker is the, probably the most popular one for this. Um, you can apply through skilled worker. And if you just have one of those 29 occupations, you're gonna go through the BC PNP tech uh, mm -hmm. initiative. Is that correct, Jenny? Yeah, so you will enjoy faster processing time. Mm -hmm. And there is also, um, in terms of the job offer, the job offer does not, uh, there are some uh, details about the job offer. It can be just a one year job offer. Um, there's okay. also oh. being an offer, yeah, compared to other streams. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, great. Great question, Emmett, though. Uh, I find BCPMP is so confusing because they have these four different streams that have two different application processes and then they have the tech initiative. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get it, you get it, yeah. or you never have to get it, and instead you can work with a consultant who will help you get it. <laughs> um, okay, so let's move on to uh, the next slide, which I believe is entrepreneur immigration. So look, we're not going to go into detail about BC PNP uh, entrepreneur streams. There are two streams. Uh, we're going to cover like the main uh, financial mm -hmm. requirements, which usually... Uh, dissuade most people from applying unless you you know you've got a uh, hundred grand lying around um at least but if yeah at least at very and least. if if you do think that you meet the eligibility for entrepreneur it's such a complicated application like you i i'm a big uh i'm pro like doing applications yourself if you can this one, like, you're going to want to work with a professional like Jenny <laughs> because it's uh, complicated. So, Jenny, can you talk us through uh, the two uh, entrepreneur streams of the BCPNP? Yeah, so the, as you show in the, on the, in the slide, the minimum investments are different depending on the stream. The base category is the classic one. And then the regional pilot was launched uh, back in 2019. Yeah, I think it was 2019. And... That has been recently extended, I believe, until 2024. But um, the regional pilot basically covers um, just some communities that have um, uh, joined this uh, this pilot, this initiative. And right. the list of communities that are eligible uh, keep 
keep changing, that are, the participant ones are changing. It's a very dynamic list to start. Yeah. But um, in terms of net worth, the personal or family net worth can, would need to be 600,000 for the base one, the classic one, and then 300,000 for regional pilot. But mm -hmm. these figures are just, in my opinion, the, the base to start. Okay. Yes. Yes, because um, as you mentioned, these streams are are this are part of this is part of business immigration, which is another level of complexity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If anything, I would say you still compete, even even if you are an entrepreneur candidate, you still compete. So you will be allocated points. So and the number of invitations is is small per month. So. Yeah. So yeah, so even entrepreneurs that have high net worth and are willing to invest in the program still need to compete with other entrepreneurs that have better ideas or are more aggressive in terms of investment or employment generation. So yeah, yeah. and it's a long path. So if, yeah, even if you are willing to invest, what you secure first is a work permit valid for two years. So it's, it's funny when you are a tech candidate, you can secure a nomination in days, sometimes, or in weeks. And when you're an entrepreneur candidate, it can take years to secure a nomination because the nomination, oh yes, yes. So it's um, whoever is interested in this stream needs to understand the requirements closely before embracing this and try to explore perhaps other streams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I think it, I mean it sounds it sounds like a long process and it sounds like yeah. it's a long very and strict process. process. Yeah. Yeah. And and look, it's also it's not just the financial requirements that we've we've put on this slide like, you know, having the minimum oh, investment that's just and the base. The, yeah. Yeah, you also have like you have to have uh, past work experience as a business owner or a senior manager uh, you have to you have to come up with a business idea or like an idea to like purchase a business and like that's it, it's complicated it's yeah. it's like it's it's a huge application so yeah. again if you if you are a business person and you're willing to go down this path you know all the power to you like uh, definitely do it. It, it it can work but I would strongly recommend clicking the link in the, mm -hmm. the pinned comment and booking a consultation with Jenny just to make sure that it is the right path mm -hmm. for you. Um, great. I'm going to move on to our last slide here because uh, we're going to try to wrap up in about five minutes. But Jenny, my last slide here is just kind of an opportunity for you to talk about what you do best. Um, so it's it's you know why why work with a consultant? Uh, what are you able to to provide? When does it make sense to work with with a consultant like you? Uh, we offer different services, and I think we give peace of mind and reassurance to candidates because there is indeed a lot of information online that everybody can access. But um, in immigration, uh, there are details that can make a difference. So in consultations, we confirm that um, candidates are on the right track, or we explain from the beginning what could be the best strategy for them according to their circumstances. And uh, when it's about submitting an application for permanent residency, and that what, um, what can be misleading is that dealing with a VCPMP that is a smaller government office can be um, more personable and friendly, but then there is still the federal component right. that so many people get excited and confident or sometimes overconfident mm -hmm. with a BCPMP stage, and then they get the bad experience of the bad news with dealing with the federal government. And so we we can help at any stage wherever a, a people that are considering coming to Canada are either if they are thinking about it, they have read about it, they want reassurance, they maybe already got a good prospect um, a employer in BC, maybe they are already in BC and they want to confirm what their best alternative is. There is a something that we haven't covered in detail is the point system and how every stream uh, has, each stream has a different uh, threshold, right? Like. Mm -hmm. And that keeps changing. So sometimes we find ourselves dealing with a lot of uncertainty and we need to make decisions 
uh, despite that uncertainty. And given our experience, we can help a little bit with that as well. So it's, I, I will hope we give peace of mind, some peace of mind in this very um, stressful process that can be, yeah. For sure. And and look, uh, we at Moving to Canada, we only partner with uh, a handful of immigration consultants across the country, people who, you know, we we've verified your reputation. You know, we've worked with you for years like we know that you're uh, one of the good ones out there who's actually out there to help people and to, to treat them like family. Um, so I, you know, I can't recommend you strongly enough uh, if anyone is watching and they want help, whether it's like you said, Jen, a, a consultation just to talk about your options or something more in depth to engage with the uh, mm -hmm. PNP application or the, the federal PR application, mm -hmm. any of that stuff. Um, definitely, uh, folks, check that out uh, and you can book a consultation with Jenny um, by clicking the link in the pinned comment. Uh, so I think, I mean, we're pretty much wrapped up here. Uh, Mo is asking, do you, have, do you offer resume? services or employment services, Jenny, or are you just on the immigration side of things? We focus on the immigration uh, part yeah. only, yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Mo, we do have a ton of, of free resources on the Moving to Canada website. You know, there's only so, like, you should take advantage of those resources before you consider paying someone for, like, resume services, because a lot of that stuff you can get done mm -hmm. on your own. Um, okay, that's... That's great then. We're going to finish on time, Jenny. I think this is the first for us. <laughs> <laughs> amazing uh well look thank you to those of you who have tuned in today uh i hope we've been able to answer some of your questions about the bc pnp um thank you jenny for joining us it's always a pleasure to have you on uh hopefully we'll be able to cover more immigration and bc topics in the future um, and for those of you who uh, want to rewatch any of this, reminder that it will be up on the Moving to Canada Facebook page. It usually takes a couple minutes for it to appear there. And um, we'll upload it to the Moving to Canada YouTube channel tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. We'll see you next time.